We've got life-threatening mishaps all the way from the United States to Russia. And an update on two astronauts up in space with no way of coming back home as of right now. Two astronauts, Sonny Williams and Barry Wilmore, are currently stuck in space with no clear timeline of when they will be returning home. In June, it was revealed that the two astronauts had become stranded on the ISS due to multiple malfunctions aboard the space station. On June 5th, the pair had gone up into space on Boeing human orbital spacecraft Starliner with the goal of spending just eight days outside of our atmosphere. But unfortunately, plans changed when a helium leak coupled with a failure in five of the Boeing's 20 Eight reaction control system thrusters took place, leading to the pair becoming stuck on the space station with no way home. Recent updates have revealed that the Starliner is in no position to bring the astronauts back down to Earth, and so NASA is currently working on a backup plan that involves Elon Musk's SpaceX Dragon capsule, which was supposed to launch earlier this month, August 2024, but the launch has since been pushed back to September, as NASA is currently considering cutting two of the four astronauts aboard the Dragon capsule in order to make room for Sunny and Barry. However, a decision is yet to be made. Really hoping they figure this one out soon rather than later because the whole situation sounds really scary and kind of like a huge oversight. The Soyuz 11 mission is one of the most tragic stories in space history. So in 1971, Georgi Dobrovolsky, Viktor Patsayev, and Vladislav Volkov became the first crew to successfully dock with and live aboard a space station, Salyut 1. This was a big deal at the time because living in space for an extended period was still a brand new and very exciting concept. Everything seemed to be going well. The team spent 23 days aboard Salyut 1 conducting experiments and sending back data to Earth, but as they prepared to return home, things took a turn. During re-entry, as they descended towards Earth, communication with the crew suddenly stopped. When rescue teams reached their landing site, they found that the craft looked totally fine from the outside, but when they knocked on the outside, there was no response. And when they opened the hatch, they found all three cosmonauts motionless inside the capsule. Patches of their skin had turned blue. They'd obviously suffocated. So a tiny valve had opened too early during re-entry, and the valve was supposed to open once they were safely back in Earth's atmosphere, but it opened prematurely, causing the cabin to depressurize. The crew had no spacesuits on at the time, so they couldn't survive the sudden loss of pressure. To date, this is the only case of humans actually dying in space. The failed Apollo 1 NASA mission is arguably one of the most controversial missions in NASA's entire history, and that is saying something because in the past NASA has done quite a number of incredibly questionable things. While astronauts Gus Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Schafe were not in space when the incident occurred, they were aboard the Apollo 1 rocket, which unfortunately never actually made it off the ground. While waiting in excited and anticipation for their journey, which was supposed to end in the astronauts' safe return to Earth after having been the very first men to have ever stepped foot on the moon, a flash fire broke out inside the command module that was likely sparked by an electrical short that took place under one of the three astronauts' footrests. Because the capsule was filled with pure oxygen, it was highly combustible and the whole thing went up in flames within seconds. Unfortunately, the three men were unable to escape the burning spacecraft and perished inside. Of course, this led to extreme public outrage and a major demand for a reevaluation of NASA's safety protocols, which did occur, but as you can tell by many of the points on this list, they still have quite a lot of work to do. Apollo 13 was supposed to be another routine mission to the moon, as routine as a mission to the moon can get anyway, but it quickly became one of the greatest survival stories in history. On board were astronauts Jim Lovell, Jack Swigert, and Fred Hayes, who blasted off from Earth on April 11th of 1970. Everything was going smoothly until two days into the mission when an oxygen tank exploded. The explosion ruptured the service module, which was their main spacecraft, and left them with very little power. The lunar module, which was originally meant to land on the moon, suddenly became their lifeboat. It was the only part of the spacecraft that still worked and could provide life support. The crew and NASA had to figure out how to get these astronauts back to Earth using whatever they had left. There was a ton of improvisation and on-the-fly problem-solving. They had to conserve power, so they turned off almost everything that wasn't absolutely necessary, leaving them freezing cold and struggling with low oxygen. 
they also had to manually adjust their trajectory to make sure they'd slingshot around the moon and head back to Earth. Meanwhile, NASA engineers on the ground scrambled to develop a plan to keep them alive and bring them home safely. And as insane and dire as this situation was, against all odds, the crew made it back, splashing down the Pacific Ocean on April 17th. And of course, as is tradition, Tom Hanks starred in uh, the survival picture about this movie. I think he stars in like every survival biopic. Like, he just does tons of them. I'm not going to list them here because I can't think of them off the top of my head, but just list down below in the comments. I think we'll be able to come up with like 10. In March of 1956, cosmonauts Alexei Leonov and Vladimir Komarov boarded the Vox Hod 2 and embarked on the first space mission to carry more than one crew member. And on March 18th, Alexei Leonov performed the first ever spacewalk, which was an amazing feat, but almost ended in Alexei becoming lost in space and subsequently dying of either exposure or asphyxiation. You see, when attempting to re-enter the Vauxhall 2 after his spacewalk, Alexei ran into a slight problem. His spacesuit had become filled with air, making it impossible for him to re-enter the spacecraft feet first, as intended, to ensure the safety of the astronaut. Luckily, his training had prepared him for all kinds of hazardous situations, and so he quickly came up with a plan that involved him slowly releasing the excess air from his spacesuit so that he would be able to enter the Vauxhall 2 although it was clear that feet first was no longer an option and that he would have to enter the craft head on in order to survive the ordeal. Oh, and if he didn't complete the task within the next 40 minutes, he would surely suffocate in the vacuum of space because his air was running out and his body temperature was rising rapidly due to extortion. Luckily, he remained calm and was able to avoid disaster. Unfortunately, his partner, Vladimir Komarov, would not be so lucky in the years to come. Vladimir Komarov was a Soviet cosmonaut set to pilot the Soyuz 1 mission in 1967. The mission was supposed to be a huge success for the Soviet Union, but Komarov was well aware that there were a number of technical problems with the spacecraft. He even reportedly told a close friend that he knew he wouldn't be coming back alive. But he chose to fly anyway, fearing that his backup, Yuri Gargarin, would be sent instead. Sure enough, as soon as Soyuz 1 launched, things started to go wrong. One of the solar panels failed to deploy, which meant the spacecraft didn't have enough power. Communication was spotty, and Komarov was left struggling to manually operate the spacecraft. Back on Earth, engineers were trying to come up with solutions, but the problems just kept piling up. Komarov stayed in orbit, isolated in a faulty spacecraft with very little hope of a safe return. But he stayed calm and collected as he could, trying to make the most of this very bad situation, but the whole time he must have been aware that his chances of survival were very slim. As Komarov attempted to return to Earth, the parachutes that were supposed to slow down the descent failed to deploy properly, and it tragically crashed, killing Komarov instantly. On January 28th of 1986, NASA's Space Shuttle Challenger burst into flames no more than 75 seconds after takeoff, ending the lives of all seven astronauts aboard the craft, including Krista McAuliffe, a school teacher who had joined the mission as part of the Teachers in Space project, with the hopes of filming educational videos in space, in the hopes that it might reignite American children's love of learning. At a height of about 46,000 feet and above the Atlantic Ocean, the Challenger practically disintegrated, while onlookers watched in horror as the fates of the astronauts became sealed inside of their airtight vessel. The incident later became quite the scandal, as after it occurred, NASA released a report stating that while the organization was unaware of what caused the accident, they were sure that the cabin crew would have been unconscious at the time of the explosion due to the cabin's pressure, a report that was later dismissed as the poor excuse for a cover-up attempt when it was revealed that the crew was most likely fully awake and possibly fully aware of the fact that an explosion was about to take place. Furthermore, the Rogers Commission also revealed that NASA had not taken proper safety precautions prior to the mission. Not only that, but they also never received an engineer's stamp of approval declaring the spacecraft flight ready prior to the attempted launch. Again, a massive oversight. The Space Shuttle Columbia was the oldest shuttle in NASA's fleet, 
and it had been on numerous successful missions before. On January 16th of 2003, it launched on its 28th mission with a crew of seven astronauts. Rick Husband, William McCool, Michael Anderson, Elin Ramon, Kalpana Chawla, David Brown, and Laurel Clark. And during the launch, a piece of foam insulation broke off from the external fuel tank and hit the shuttle's left wing. Now, NASA knew about this foam strike, but didn't realize the true extent of the damage. While the crew continued their work in space, engineers on the ground debated the severity of the situation, but no one fully grasped just how bad this really was. After 16 days in space, Columbia began its descent back to Earth on February 1st of 2003. As it re-entered the atmosphere, hot gases entered the shuttle through the damaged wing, causing it to snap right off. There was nothing the crew could do at that point. The shuttle just completely disintegrated over Texas and Louisiana. Another near-death experience took place on October 16th of 1979, when cosmonauts Vyacheslav Zudov and Valery Rosodesvensky attempted to re-enter Earth's atmosphere in Soviet spacecraft Soyuz 23. Unfortunately for the two men, strong winds caused the vessel to land 75 miles 120 kilometers away from its targeted landing point. And to make matters even worse, the spacecraft landed in an icy lake. But wait, there's more. Almost immediately after touchdown, Soyuz 23's parachute, which had deployed to slow the spacecraft's descent, began taking on water and subsequently dragging the Soyuz down towards the bottom of the lake as temperatures inside of the main capsule reached negative 17 degrees Celsius, 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Many failed rescue attempts were made, including an attempt to airlift the capsule, which was ultimately just too heavy. But eventually, the remaining pieces of Soyuz 23, including the main cabin containing the the men were dragged ashore, 11 hours after it had touched down on Earth. When rescuers opened the cosmonauts hatch, Zudov was unconscious and frost had almost completely lined the interior of the vessel. Luckily, both astronauts did make a full recovery, but had they spent any longer in the icy waters of Russia, things could have been way worse. The Apollo 12 mission was the second manned trip to the moon. It took place just a few months after Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin's Apollo 11 landing. This was a big deal because it was another chance to prove that landing on the moon wasn't just a one-time thing. Apollo 12 lifted off on November 14, 1969, with astronauts Charles Conrad, Richard Gordon, and Alan Bean on board. Right as the rocket was climbing into the sky, though, something pretty terrifying happened. It was struck by lightning. Not once, but two times. The first strike was even visible to the people watching from the ground, which would have been I mean, a pretty incredible sight, but no doubt horrifying. Like, my God, what happens when lightning strikes a rocket? Well, luckily, in this case, everything was still working fine. The electrical systems rebooted, and they continued on with the mission. Once in space, the Apollo 12 team went on to land on the moon, just like planned, but it was definitely not the smooth trip uh, up that they'd been hoping for. As Pete Conrad famously stated, that may have been a small one for Neil, but that's a long one for me. And the return to Earth wasn't easy either. When the spacecraft splashed down in the ocean, a big wave hit them. This jolt knocked a 16 millimeter camera loose and it hit astronaut Alan Bean on the head, giving him a pretty nasty cut. Thankfully, Pete Conrad jumped into action and patched Bean up right away. All right, I'm, I am confident there will be brought back safe. I got faith in our technology. Oh yeah, nowadays, for sure. It's, it's just a, like I said, a lot of these things, massive oversight, just lack of initial, um, yeah. Com com competence. Yeah, and a scary yeah. situation, but yeah, fingers sure. crossed we'll be back, brought back soon. Yes. And uh, yeah. if you want to learn more, we do have a whole video on it. But for now, we've been your hosts, and we'll catch you next time. Cheers, friends. Mm -hmm.